What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the College Loop Podcast, episode 31 of the College Loop Podcast. And I'm the Chandler Wooten episode. There we go. Chandler <laughs> there you go. There you yeah. go. But yeah, I had a great day at Auburn Athletics on this Saturday as we're recording as we ran the gauntlet, basketball, baseball, and softball. Went 3-0 and on the day. So great day for us. Great day for Auburn. And I mean, uh, we love the softball game. Y'all coming out to show support to the team. And recognizing us, we did not have that on our bingo card for. Yeah, that was so not on my bingo card whatsoever. Yeah. It was such a cool opportunity. And if you guys are looking at me right now, like looking at my phone, probably some listening. I'm pulling up the box real quick because for whatever reason, jumped out. We're all in one location today. We're all in Auburn sitting with our, the lovely Daniel Locke. Uh, thank you for letting us crash in your house. Always. Tell me about Boston. That's right. Locke behind us. That's right. That's right. <laughs> How about those bees? Anyways, those bees? so we uh, we had a ton of fun running the Auburn Gauntlet today and had the opportunity to check out and hang out with some of our fans. So really excited to talk a little more about that when we get to the softball segment. And I'm going to flip this a little bit this way. Just that way Dan- uh, Daniel's not completely cut off. Let's talk Auburn hoops. Huge Huge, huge W for Bruce and the boys this weekend. Uh, excuse me, this yesterday as, this, as the show's coming out. 79 70 over Tennessee. Uh, Rick Barnes was flustered the entirety of the game, guys. And uh, Dylan and I were able to uh, be, well, obviously, Daniel's always there. He's a student, but Dylan and I were able to be there for the season finale at Neville Arena and SEC, a regular season finale in general. And guys, I wanted to talk about a couple takeaways here. First and foremost, let's talk Wendell Green Jr. I mean, what what a game out of out of Wendell after twenty four and six, right? Correct, and and he desperately needed one of those kind of games. Yeah. And and Dylan, my voice is shot, so I'm about to have to cough here in a second. So I'm gonna take a sip of water. Uh, I'm let you talk. Take it. So we, I looked over at Tar in the middle of the game, and I go, "This is like a huge big pickup game for Wendell Green. Last two games, single digit numbers from him in the scoring scoring box: twenty four points, four rebound or four assists. There we go, and one rebound. There we go." And I, I think this team overall, Wendell Green shot two of four from the three-point line. I really like how this team uh, – well, never mind. I was about to say didn't shoot the three that – but they shot the three well. They took better shots. Took better shots. That's shot. important. Eight for 22, which 36%, I got to be honest. It's not that bad for this team. Sure. It's, I know. Been, that's, that's a great night for this team. There have been lower lows from the three-point line this season. And, I mean, that's a pretty good night for most teams. So <laughs> Yeah. But the starting lineup in general – yeah, they probably really, standing night. They scoring. were really in their bag. Except Jasper got two points, but you know, he's not the scoring type. He's a defensive monster. And we saw that whenever he was on the Scoby, who seemed to light us up. He was the guy Auburn went to to shut down the Scoby. And you look at the other scorers on this team, the leading scorers, we went to Green at 24, Janai Broom 17. Alan Flanagan had a 16 point game. And of course, Jay will lock it up with 13 points. I did want to talk for a second about, about Zeb Jasper, Dylan. And I've got a question for you here, Daniel. And mm-hmm. I know that a lot of people kind of get caught up in the fact that Zeb Jasper is, is not a high scoring guy. He's not a flashy numbers guy. I tweeted this earlier and I'm going to stand on the sill. I'm going to go down the sill. Zeb Jasper was quietly one of the most important players on the floor tonight. And, and yeah. you talked about his ability to, uh, don't talk about his ability to lock up his Kobe. Hustle plays. And defense lockdown defense, I'd rather. How important has Zeb Jasper been coming down, really coming down the stretch? I mean, I think he's kept his Auburn in games. Huge. Um, you, you saw Wednesday night locking down the likes of Brandon Miller. Um, then you've seen it all year because he's shut down Viscovi the first time. Sure. Um, we saw it in Athens. He really showed out defensively. The rest of the team did not, but he did. Absolutely. So, that's going to be a key factor as Auburn gets ready to, you know, hopefully both tournaments, um, make a run in each. I think the NIT talk is pretty much behind us. Not 100%. I think Auburn's locked in. I, I personally, I, I think that this one did it. I think that Auburn's in. I think Bruce and the boys are dancing. And that's that's important because you don't have to – I don't think you have to, really have to make noise in the SEC tournament. If you win that first game you're in, for sure, yeah. no question. You can go to sleep and not worry about it. And I'm looking – I'm going to find a negative from this game which I'm always going to be the guy. Sure. No, I mean, I fun. preach about it almost every episode of Auburn basketball. Seven points from the bench tonight. Yeah. The starting lineup went off. Well, important to remember, remember Dylan Carwell not in the lineup. Dylan Carwell's injured. And, and I, I, I'm with you. Carry on. I'm sorry. Yeah. And I think both Johan and Sibo both have understand have understood to themselves that they are not going to be the offensive threats on this team. Sure. But I, I believe they have really stepped up defensively. I'm going to give them the Jasper treatment. I'm not impressed by the point total that they got, but I was really impressed by their ability to shut down the paint. Sure. I saw last game with Alabama and Chris Moore. I thought he did a very good job of shutting down Brandon Miller down the stretch. 
But uh, we got because we were Birmingham at a, a monster dump. That was the loudest I've heard Auburn or Devil Arena, excuse yeah. me, since it was named Auburn Arena. <laughs> it, that that's that was that was a loud moment and and exciting for for everyone there. Everyone was pumped up and it was a big momentum grab. Really, I yeah. don't I don't think we've talked enough back to back games. Daniel Leor Berman has had two big moments in that three pointer going into the half. And Alabama last last week was or, uh, this past week was huge, and then that dunk was just a huge momentum grabber. Leroy Berman, I mean, quietly a very very good piece. Uh, he lacked a little defense today. It happens. I think he's been consistent as all. I think he's been consistent as hell. And I, I think this has been the best Leroy Berman season we have seen from him. Oh well, yeah, I think he stepped up a lot defensively. I sure. think he was able to get actual minutes, and he showed that he was that momentum swinger when it came to shooting the three. If he was open, he's gotten it. Yeah. Do you think there's an SEC team out there that Leor Berman is not just a scholarship player, but potentially even a six man starter? Georgia. Georgia. Georgia for sure. Ole Miss. I, Ole Miss. Van, Vanderbilt. I think that there's a, a handful of teams that 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 Leor Berman could, could compete on, and then that that's a good question, and and something that actually people have asked us a lot. Keep keeping it rolling. Don't. I'm sorry. Did you want, you want to add? I was going to bring up Katie Johnson for a little bit. I. Yeah, you had to put him in the barn today. You, yeah, you had to like put him back in the in in the. Which I think is bad because he only shot one of three, and we've seen worse KD yeah. nights. Thirty three percent from the three from him is a great night for KD Johnson, especially from what we've seen this past season. Because highs are high for KD, lows super low. They're the very yeah, rough. But I, I thought he, it was a very important three in like the game, but. He just wasn't doing what KD Johnson usually does. He stays well, what he can do. What he can do. But sure. it is what he does. What he's known for is driving in, getting the layup and getting fouled and then get that that's usually his bread and butter three. Sure. It's a and one. Sure. But a, a lot of times I thought this Auburn team kind of refrained from driving in when they really should have. Yeah, no, I, I I agree. And and you definitely want to see more inside work. Uh granted. I thought that Janai did play very well. The mid range, the mid range shot today from from multiple standpoints. And you look at Alan Flanagan. First off, that's what he does. Yeah. If you look at Jalen Williams, I mean, he was great from the mid range today, and, and and a lot of other guys really stepped up. Wendell Green made them respect, made Tennessee respect Auburn from from the mid range. That was that was an impressive uh, feat, and something they're going to want to have to take into that SEC tournament. And I'm going to use that as a good opportunity to keep rolling here, guys. Auburn's going to take on Arkansas. And a team that I really don't think Auburn matches up well against. I, I don't. No. And in terms of size and in terms of interior size specifically and in terms of shooting, that'll be the first round of the SEC. Well, technically the second round of the SEC tournament, but your first game in the SEC tournament. Arkansas is not the team that we thought they were going to be this year. They're not. And they're not the team that Auburn played on January 7th that Auburn had their way with inside the sure. arena. Um because this team came, I believe it was the second or third ranked recruiting class. They were supposed to have a very, very good year. Sure. And it's been a big disappointment Absolutely. Um, for what they've had coming in. Uh, Eric Musselman, I've heard some talk about him being on the hot seat. Do I think that's ridiculous? Yes. Yes, absolutely. But he's the right there. guy there. He's the, right guy. the talk's there. Um, I don't really I, – I guess these Arkansas fans are just so down bad that you have a little taste of success, and then it, you, it's ripped away from you, and you're just – don't know what to do, but you've seen that a little bit across multiple sports, but I won't I won't dive into that. That's neither here nor I do there. love I, I'm a it's an unrelated, but I do love that Eric Musselman and Sam Pittman both and both sports for Arkansas I'd kind of go up the same energy. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, hundred percent. Except for baseball coaches the same way. Yeah, I oh hundred percent. Arkansas has a type. Yeah, I, I can't describe the type either. I can't um, either. But it is a type for sure, hundred percent. Let's let's keep the keep the ball rolling here, guys. And let, let's talk football. It's it's spring football. Back on the planes, we've been talking about this past week. We got the NFL Combine going on. Dylan's going to talk tank talks football right here. He's going to break down what's going on in the NFL Combine since we last spoke to you guys here on the loop on Thursday. A lot of stuff's gone down since then. A lot of good things for Auburn, Auburn faithful. Very exciting things for for guys going into the league. And we've got a a very in depth, hopefully in depth interview with with Zach Blackerby of the Auburn Daily and Locked On Auburn on on Tuesday's show. He'll come on and he'll really break down what he's seen. And, and what he's watched in the film room and granted for full disclosure in the middle of spring sports, I don't have a ton of time to watch film. So I've really got to catch up. Hopefully Zach's going to be able to come in and spit some facts. I know he will. Dylan, for now, I'm going to let you talk a little bit about the NFL draft combine and, and the guys that, that Auburn has, has seen really put on, especially on PAP or put on a clinic. Oh yeah. So we're going into day four of the NFL combine. Just to start off, I'm going to start with a little preview for today's combine where we're going to see one Auburn tiger 
try to get his stock up in a absolutely loaded running back class. Tank Bigsby will be performing. And I think Tank has a lot to prove. I think people are really downplaying his ability to catch the ball because he didn't do it that much at Auburn. But he has the ability to catch the ball. And I think a lot of the drills he's going to be doing is going to show that. But I'm also looking forward to seeing what his 40 time is going to be, the three cone drill, all of that jazz. Cause I think sure. I think if anyone is going to jump up the highest in this uh running back class, it's going to be Mr. Tank Bigsby. Absolutely. Right. But looking at day one of the combine, we saw three Auburn Tigers. Uh, perform all the drills. Ikili Oda had a calf sprain, so he missed it, but he was there for a lot of interviews. Sure. I've not heard anything about his stock going down. People, the teams love to talk to him. But Owen Papo, oh my lord, that dude is fast. At six foot tall, 225 pounds, running four three nine forty. We've been trying to tell y'all he's a freak. We've, yeah. we've been trying to say this. And I mean, I came on the show the last time and said that I'm expecting a 4-4 four, four at the lowest I say four three nine. He outdid me. I have a question for our our fans that, that are listening and, and tweet at us. Owen Papo is the most misused player in Auburn football history since blank. Let us know. I I, I will die on that hill, folks. I, <laughs> I, I'm so serious. He's, I, I think he's well. Obviously, he's a nickel. We talk about all the time. I think yeah. he could be a really big safety. But his his athleticism, the fact that Auburn wasn't able to plug him in and set him up for more success than he had. Mind-boggling. Carry on. Sorry, don't yeah, let me. So he also put up a there. thirty-five and a half inch vertical, ten foot six inch broad jump, which is actually not the longest broad jump from an Auburn Tiger. Which means there's more athletic freaks going on <laughs> from sure. Auburn's combine. But yeah, Papo, sure. great day. I think his stock definitely went up. No, for if, sure. If he ran. If you, if I didn't say it already, four three nine forty, which is tied for second from a linebacker since two thousand and three. Which only, is impressive. Only beat out by a four three eight from Shaquem Griffin from UCF. Who I forgot about that. That, very, that guy can move. Very, very <laughs> that guy can move. But the highest draft draftable guy from the Auburn Tigers that I did very well. Derek Hall formed all the he did all the linebacker drills. Did not do the defensive end drills. Uh, so six foot three, two hundred fifty four pounds. What he was uh, heightened at, uh, measured at. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. But Derek Hall, 254 pounds, run a 4-5-5-40. Was not expecting that from Derek Hall. Uh, he did not perform the bench press, which I was kind of sad by because I thought Derek Hall was definitely going to absolutely destroy that. But 33 and a half foot vertical, 10 foot, 7 inch broad jump. Beat out the freak Owen Papo by an inch. That's crazy. And, you know, football is a game of inches. So, <laughs> right, right. But Derek Hall, Great, great day. Plug, Jack. Both on Papo, I did not say it about on Papo, but in the drills on Papo, Derek Hall showed great footwork. I think Derek Hall can play that linebacker role. He looks kind of like a faster James Harrison, which I know you're going to really enjoy that comp because of I like your, that comp. <laughs> Steelers, Steelers love. Sure. But his ability to move his feet like he did and just how he looks, the speed, I was. I know he's a strong guy, but I was not expecting for it. it Dude I, can already hit like James Harrison. So. <laughs> it's going to be scary. And I got to be honest, did all those defensive linebacker drills that they did when you get to pick off the ball, Derek Hall did not drop a single pass. Feel different, I suppose. And the last guy I'm talking about, Kobe Wooden, uh, four seven nine forty from a guy who was six foot four, two hundred and seventy three pounds. That feels like science shouldn't allow that. No. Yeah, like that should be illegal. Like broad jump nine feet seven inches, ran a four five two on the sh- twenty yard shuttle and a bench press of twenty three, which I thought was a little low, but the bench press doesn't really mean much. It's kind of just like how many two twenty fives can you do? Colby Wooden also showed a lot of great footwork, a lot of good agility in his defensive lineman drills. Uh, I, if I got to be honest, these three guys definitely raised their stock up. Uh, Iku Leota, I hope, is healthy by the pro day. And last guy I'm going to talk about, uh, Daniel Carlson. Uh, Andres. Andres Carlson. There you go. It does not seem like uh, NFL, NFL.com at least, not very high on his prospects of getting drafted or sneaking in. Uh, it doesn't help when one of your strengths is listed as your brother being in the NFL. Love Andres to death. Uh, I hope something changes in the like with the pro day. Uh, but it does not seem like the draft analysts really are appreciative. Of not that. at all. Not Especially exactly. the fact that if you if you draft them, you're going to get J-Mac as well. So it's a combo deal. You get the you package. Really go against that. But that's it for the combine. 
Make sure to watch it after the show comes out. It's going to be 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, so you can watch Tank Bigsby try to race the stock up in a loaded draft class. But yeah, to move on to running, keep I'm it running so back. glad that we let him handle the NFL draft. So combine yeah. stuff, man. I I can read into draft stock. I can read the reports that Dylan will give me. I can interpret it all, but God, I don't want to watch it. But yeah, keep, keep it on running backs. To continue our spring practice position breakdown, I got to work on that title. We are doing the running back position in an absolutely loaded running back room that Auburn has collected. And Auburn runs five deep in this running back room. We're looking at Jarquez Hunter, looking at Demar Alston, we've got Brian Batte, looking at Jeremiah Cobb, and Sean Jackson. We'll never forget Sean Jackson because he always pops off in those A days. He makes the most of his carries that he gets. What are y'all talking about? We're listening to you. I promise you. I was putting down. I was pointing out rundown points gotcha. to, to Daniel. I've got my rundown. Yeah. So what those is, watching the video podcast, I've got the rundown on my phone. I was so what are y'all thoughts on them. the running back room? I think this is amazing. Um, cool. well, that's, but, sure. All right. Jesus Christ. Yeah, so the running back room is actually right. loaded. All right. So I'm, I'm, I'm up first here since we just played a little game, live game of rock, paper, scissors. Thanks, to, uh, courtesy of Daniel. Running back room is very, very curious this year. I, I, I use that word pretty serious, sincerely. Excuse me. You've got a lot of pieces. Jarquez Hunter is your one, your one back. You're your one guy. Oh, for sure. Clear answer there. Damari Austin, going to be a great piece that comes in. He can run the ball downhill. He, he's he's good at lateral movement. He can run behind the pads. I think Jeremiah Cobb is too damn talented to keep him off the field. I know that we go back and forth about this. I think Brian Batte, he comes in and he brings that – that that element of he can he can return the ball he will be Auburn's returner in, in, in any return situation he's an all American at, at, at returning the football and and I do think that there could be some I know you hate this but like Sean Shivers like uses maybe not the same skill set but oh, yeah uses yes the same similar packages but I think you can't keep Jeremiah Cobb off the field and Damari Alston I think he's just also just too damn good to keep him off the football field. I think that you have Damari and Jeremiah Cobb as your kind of 2A, 2B kind of guys, and they'll rotate in and get pretty similar touches. Jarquez Hunter, you should be getting Jarquez Hunter the ball 30 times a game, 25-plus times a game, and that's no exaggeration. That's kind of where I'm at. I mean, Sean Jackson is a world where he sees the field a little bit. I don't think that he's on that same playing field as the other guys. Oh, he's not. But It's a drop-off, definitely, but Sean Jackson definitely – Makes the most of the plays that he is in. You're going to see him a lot in the beginning of the season when we play like the UMasses of sure. the world, New Mexico State. You're definitely going to see him, but he is deserving of he maybe he completes the running back. Absolutely, and, but that that's where my head's at, Daniel. Where, where's your where's your head out about this sure. Auburn running back room? So, like I said the other day, I like this offensive line way more than any Auburn offensive line I've liked since I've been an Auburn fan, and that's you know. We haven't even seen it yet, and I can already compliment my dad. When did your Auburn fandom start? 2019. All right. Well, anyway, that's, that's definitely fair. <laughs> I mean, um, like I like said, said, I think the floor <laughs> for this line should be a top half in the SEC, seven or better. And you've got a loaded running back room with a guy with plenty of experience in Jarquez Hunter, yes. two years of it. Absolutely. Um, Demari Austin took some carries last year. Then you've got these newcomers. Okay. Jeremiah Cobb, like Harrison said, too talented to keep off the field. Brian Petit, I walked into the Haley Center behind him on Friday morning. He's munching on a bagel. It's him. This is the guy. <laughs> he can do it all. So he can eat and walk at the same time. And anyone who can do that officially is that guy. You're so right. Can you walk and chew gum at the same time? No, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I love it. this guy is going to have plenty of playing time. And I'm saying it right now. Sign up. Put stock in. Buy stock now. Five kickoff and or punt returns for touchdowns. By Brian Batie this year. Put on the Instagram. Love it. I'm recording that. Great clickbait. Great clickbait. Two kick return touchdowns since 2019. Yeah. That's phenomenal. I've seen both of them. Might be since 2018. Yeah. Okay. okay. We're going to keep moving here because this is getting wild, but I do love that. I love the clickbait. I love the clickbait. I'm a I huge fan of the clickbait. We're going to roll into some diamond sports here, guys. And, and Daniel, we're going to round it out with you and gymnastics here in a little bit and, and talk a little bit of women's hoops. Uh, but we're going to we're going to kick it over to softball real quick. Auburn is three and one of the J.B. Moore Invitational. Uh, they failed to South, South Alabama on Saturday afternoon in a game that South Alabama clearly thought was their Super Bowl. It probably was not not to now. Nah, that's not me being a jerk. It's we got chirped on our way walking into the into the stadium where South Alabama told their team. I'm not exaggerating. Their actual players told us we missed the game that they won. We were like, well, there's another game later. Um, don't know if you knew this or not, that we had to swing my baseball since we're running the gauntlet here. And uh, Auburn fell uh, very narrowly in, in, in that game, in a late-game effort. But 
they got the job done in a sloppy game yeah. on 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 Saturday night over Tennessee Tech. And I think we learned something tonight, guys. I think we learned a little bit about that Auburn rotation that we needed. We needed to learn, and Nikki Dean needed to learn, and his group needed to learn. Yeah. I don't know that this group goes deeper than three. I don't think you need it to go more than three. No. As, as long as you keep Shelby, Annabelle, and um, and Maddie all, all healthy, Maddie Penta all healthy, I think you're in good shape. You've got limited innings for Maddie Penta right now. That's okay. It's early season. You you don't want to wear out arms. We got to talk with Bree Ellis a little bit after the game. And she mentioned it was some pretty sloppy softball. And, and she was pretty candid about it. And I'm not throwing Bree on the bus. She just said it was sloppy softball. That's the sloppiest they played this year. And, and guys, she's right. Today was not good softball from Auburn. And they still snuck away one and one and, and hung a bunch of runs. I mean, playing floppy and winning is a pretty nice good, luxury. A, a nice feat in and of itself. But yeah, you're right. Uh, Emma, I can't remember her last name. I, I, I hate that it's escaping me. But she let off uh, as pitcher, and it uh, she had glimpses where it looked really good, but also glimpses where it was – she's young. That's the problem is that she's a young pitcher. She's definitely going to be there. She's definitely going to get better. But after Annabelle, I don't know if Auburn has a true pitching threat, but I mean, three-day series are going to be coming around, and you probably don't need to go deeper than three. After that, you're just trying to try out arms. I mean, this is – I'm not going to throw Tennessee Tech under the bus. They gave Auburn a run for their money for a little bit. But it's Tennessee Tech. Uh, How about Emma Rolf? Rolf. Rolf. Yep. There we Sorry. Are. My apologies. I wanted to say Wolf, and I didn't want to say that incorrectly. My apologies. But, yeah, Tennessee Tech, you're just getting young arms in. Annabelle came in and kind of took over and kind of showed what she's at uh, in that pitching rotation, the main one. I mean, she's extremely very, extremely good and and, and, and has made the right decision to transfer into Auburn from, from Michigan. And to, not Michigan, not, no diss on their program. But she plugs in very, very well and compliments Maddie Penta and Shelby Lowe. Yes, it, was, did, it didn't help that Tennessee Tech was kind of hitting the ball in the right place every time they hit it. Well, I mean, all, uh, Tennessee Tech had a, had a handful of just deep bombs where when they left the bat, we all collectively, before we, you know, they even got out of the infield, we said, yeah, that ball's out of the yard. Yeah. And, and sometimes you're going to get tagged up. Sometimes that's going to happen. And Auburn still found a way to win today. And, and that's what's important. And, and did they did they fall to South Alabama? Sure. Are you going to drop a game in the non-conference here and there that's when you think you shouldn't drop? Absolutely. Every, everyone everyone does at, on the, at, at the Diamond Sport level, if nothing else. They're going to get to – Auburn's going to get the chance to bounce back. Or I guess not bounce back, but continue to get back on that roll, get to their 20 – it'll be the 20th win if they can secure it tomorrow – over Bowling Green. I believe that game's at 230 Central. You'll have to double check me on that. And to mention the 230 Central and to recap that, uh, they did beat Bowling Green like 11 to 1 sure. on day one of the J.B. Moore Memorial. So it's going to be a get right game. That's right. And, and I think that this this evening is one of those where, uh, according to according to Bree, the, the girls all had an opportunity to talk to each other after the game and, and say, hey guys, this isn't it. <laughs> this is this. Is, we're better than this. And, and sometimes you just got to have that meeting yeah. where you're like, hey, dial it back in. We got away with one tonight. Yeah. Let's keep moving. Good to have it early because, I mean, after you get done with the non-cons, season does not get any easier. That's right. That's right. Before we go over to baseball, we've got a really exciting announcement here on the College Loop, and I'm, I'm picking it up right now. We've got a giveaway coming up for you guys this week. If you want the opportunity to win an autograph, and if you're watching the video podcast, you can see where it says War Eagle, Brie Ellis, number 77, Auburn softball. We've got one of these. We're going to be giving away on Twitter this week. Make sure you're interacting with our socials. Well, I promise you, we're not going to let Dylan pick the winner. We're going to let Daniel pick the winner and make make sure things are because this. If we let Dylan pick the winner, he's going to magically win. It's going to be in his. It's crazy. The winner is the winner's at you boy the tank. That's crazy. crazy. But all you guys have to do is make sure you're following us. Make sure you have all of our post notifications turned on for both. Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all of the above, Facebook, all of the above. Make sure that you're you're following along because we'll make sure there's ways to win. Uh, elsewhere, if this is if this goes really well, this is not a problem. This was money well spent. We're more than happy to keep doing doing giveaways. We think it's really cool, uh, an opportunity, really cool of Bree. We appreciate her uh, for for hooking us up here. Um, so make sure you guys stay stay tuned for the opportunity to win a autographed Bree Ellis Auburn softball. It's got the Auburn stamp there. It's you can see, I promise it's not fake. So it's signed. It's, it's authenticated. I've got the picture. Yeah. But I've we do. seen Oliver Henry. That That's is right. Not us. That's right. Yeah. The block lettering is also like me, but um, mine's not that neat. So if you guys want the opportunity, you definitely should. So to win an autographed Bree Ellis Auburn softball, make sure you follow along on all of our socials. And a huge shout out to at Wardam Softball for coming to hit us up at the game. A lot of fun. And we got recognized by 
few people there. Obviously. Yeah, which was a ton of fun, guys. We we appreciate you. Please, if you ever see us out on public, please come say hi. And we got the opportunity to sit. This is the last little bit that I'm going to plug about our, our extremely fun evening at softball. We got an opportunity to sit down with Mama Ellis and Mimi. Mimi, yeah. Mimi Ellis at uh, for a couple of innings during the softball game, <laughs> which was nothing short of a, a pleasure. And not, not to mention, we're apparently going to host the Ellis family reunion and potentially maybe get all all four or five of them on board. We've, on the show. we've been told that we're, we're hosting the, the Ellis family reunion via Zoom on uh, on the college loop. And you know what? We're down. We're here for it. We're, that'll be fun. We're that, that'll, be a, that'll be a fun little uh, – maybe we'll make that a, a YouTube exclusive. Make sure, make sure you guys go subscribe because we're struggling in that department. If you're watching the, the video version, please freaking subscribe. <laughs> I'm not one of those people that likes to put the bell thing on their on – their, we're just here for content. It's not about golf. Sixty-three percent of y'all are watching them. Watching them. Yeah. Subscribe. It helps us. It makes us. It lets us know that y'all love the videos, exactly. and might we might get some more video content going out. That's right. We'd love to do that. Something else we'd love to do. Got a lot of fun stuff planned for the rest of baseball season, guys. Let's talk Auburn baseball. Tigers are two and zero over Lipscomb, and no, sh- nothing short of drama on Saturday night, where you wind up having Ike Irish walk it off, uh, walk off base hit. Um, for 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 the for the Tigers to to, to walk away to two another, they're going to be trying for that elusive sweep on Sunday behind the arms of freshman Zach Crotchfeld. Uh, he'll be on the bump for his first start. Guys, the bullpen has got to figure itself out. So I know it's so early, I, and I'm patient here. I'm not pressing. No one press the panic button. But this is a point of emphasis. I think the lineup will fix itself. The the yeah. the, the batting's there. The, the the offense is there. The defense is fine. The bullpen's really got to figure itself out. Yeah, it's wearing thin because Joseph Gonzalez has missed another weekend. Uh, from what we know, or we like to say this, it's just sort sort of yeah. Just he's shoulders trying to get shoulders. healthy. He'll be ready for conference play. But I'm also looking at he's just talking about the bullpen being a little thinner at times. I'm going to look at this game three as an opportunity for Auburn to finally get right in game three scenarios. Yeah, I know this is going to make Dolan extremely happy if Auburn completes the sweep, and he'll shut up about them not winning seven games. <laughs> I just think at the point of the emphasis, it's going to happen. It becomes a talking point. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not on your case. A, a sweep would be of Lipscomb would be huge, especially since this is your lowest rated RPI opponent. It's not a bad, not a bad opponent. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's actually a good, good thing. This is your lowest RPI opponent. But to knock that out with a sweep, you're in really good shape, and and you're climbing up, and you're taking care of business, and dumping people in midweeks. You got to keep dumping people in midweeks, and and Auburn should do so. But Daniel, these arms have got to stop giving up runs and masses. The, and and the big thing is. These young guys are afraid to get hit. And I'm not talking about the batters. I'm talking about the pitchers. They're afraid to get lit up. You're going to get hit in the SEC. Yeah. It's going to happen. It's the most competitive conference. I say this all the time. And people will call me a, you know, a writer or whatever you want to say about the SEC. It's how the Eastern Conference. It's the most competitive conference in collegiate sports. You got to learn how to be okay with getting knocked around. And this group's learning it. They learned it tonight. <laughs> and they've not even experienced the SEC play yet. So something to keep an eye on. And, and, and Auburn's got a lot of a lot of positives coming out of this weekend as well. Another positive on the Plains. Busy weekend in the spring. Always is busy this time. March is always nuts. <laughs> March is a crazy month. For, for, for us specifically. <laughs> Daniel. Yeah. Auburn Gymnastics. You've been waiting on it. Right. They were up in Lexington. Talk to me. They were up in Lexington. Uh, they seemingly rest me. Um, nothing to be alarmed there. Just it happens. It's a sport that just takes a toll on your body. So every now and again, when you compete at the level that she does, you just quite simply need some time off. Sure. Um, Auburn, unfortunately, fell to the number 12 Kentucky Wildcats, 197.675 to 196.450. Darion Goborn had Auburn's highest score on um, bars with a 9.9. Uh, Cassie Stevens had the highest score at ball with a 9.975. Um, Olivia Hollingsworth led Auburn on floor with a 9.9. And then Cassie Stevens led Auburn on, excuse me, Beam also with a 9.850. And Cassie Stevens scored a 39 or yeah, 39.5 to security all around title for Auburn. And just Cassie Stevens is unreal. The yeah. fact that Super there different. are so many, pretty much probably over half of the division one programs, Cassie Stevens is her on the team. And the fact that she's number three would probably be her spot. Yeah, that's ridiculous. She's ridiculous. And it 
really just goes to show you how well Jeff Graben and company have stacked this Auburn team, which and is developed and developed, loaded with talent. Um, there are schools where Cassie Stevens would be the best gymnast in school history. There are conferences where she would be the best gymnast in the conference. Right. <laughs> there are. There are power five conferences where she would be the best gymnast in the conference. That's and that's not yeah, yeah. one more home game or one more home meet yes. for the Auburn gymnastics. And I just gotta say, if you have not seen Suni Lee, Darian Gobor, and Cassie Stevens and company in person yet, you've it's got to. Chance. This is your last chance. Uh, Neville Arena, Friday night, 7 o'clock. The Penn State Nittany Lions come to town. We didn't get to beat Penn State in the fall. Come, come watch us beat Penn State now. I haven't made them past two falls. So. That's right. right. That's right. Break the streak. Uh, it's going to be a wide out because Auburn invented that. <laughs> and the, this gets us ready in time for the SEC Championship. That's right. That's the Championship. Tomorrow we attend the tour. They're around the corner. Baking babies and kids and cats. Yes. And Daniel. Daniel will be hanging out. Covering us. Hey, so – Lots of fun stuff. Like Daniel said, if you've not been able to see Sunisha Lee in person and, and the rest of this game for sure, but if you've not been able to see Sunisha Lee in person, it's your last chance. It's worth the price of admission. And um, I wish we would have thought about it ahead of time. We would have done a ticket giveaway here on the on the college loop, which we played around with that a little earlier today. We yeah. almost gave away two tickets to the Tennessee game and decided it was a little too late. Be on the lookout for that in the future. I think that's something we may, may start talking maybe baseball tickets, um, things, things that make softball tickets for sure. Uh, things of that nature. Okay, right next to us. As we, That's uh, right. You can sit, sit right next there. to the college loop. If you're smart, you'll sit away from the college loop because we are wild <laughs> and in a different breed. One last thing I want to talk about a little bit, Auburn women's basketball rounded up their season in the SEC tournament against Georgia, getting kind of Molly Rock 63 to 47. It's one of those games you kind of were never in it. Auburn didn't shoot the rock very well. Uh, it, it happens. And it led, led by, uh, what was it, 13 from AC, 13 yeah. from AC, and 10 <laughs> from Sydney Shaw. 12. Excuse me, 12. Excuse me, I can read. I swear to God, I can read. But overall, I mean, this is not the end of the world. You finish your season 15 and 14 years over 500 year. That's huge. That's big time for this program. I think we all agree it's in the right direction. This freshman class is encouraging, and your neighbor upstairs is having a field day right now, Daniel. I don't know what they're doing. They must be bringing a pet elephant through the room. But our fans should be very excited about the future of this program and the future of this year's freshman class. They should be. Um, not playing on the first day of the SEC tournament for this team is huge. Um, what? He's laughing that you're the only person here that says tournament and the rest of us say tournament. Anyway. <laughs> not the Bostonian. Um, I was trying to thought. Thank you, Dylan. Right. <laughs> women's hoops. So I cannot wait to see what Sydney Shaw and all these freshmen do. Big things are ahead. Coach Jay, I'm excited. I'm excited that I still have two more seasons on the Plains to watch them play. As you should be. Very excited for, for the future of that program. Also, fingers crossed, Hopeful will be able to bring Coach Jay on to the loop sooner than later as part of our interview series. Interview series resumes next week. We've got a lot of exciting stuff, exciting stuff coming up for you guys. Like I said, Zach Black will be all, should be on the Tuesday Tuesday show. If he gets flexed, it's because we bring Bray on. That could happen. Um, Bray, if you're listening and we haven't messaged you yet, my bad. Let me know. <laughs> we'll uh, We'll reach out. And I know she wanted to come back on and talk a little more softball. A lot of good things going on as uh, as Auburn softball gets closer to the SEC season. Auburn baseball gets closer to the SEC season. And we've got a lot of cool things coming on. I've, I've been in contact with a couple of people about possibly talking a little bit of equestrian. We need to get educated. We don't know what's going on. I want to learn. Auburn's very good at it. It's very popular. Lots of cool stuff coming up on our interview series. For now, we're going to go ahead and plug everything as we always do. Dylan, I think we're good to get out of here. I'll let Daniel go ahead and kick us off. And I'll let you round us out. We'll be going right to left or left to right. Sorry left to right as you're watching on the video screen so for the first time all together right yeah, yeah. great go ahead daniel uh, you can follow me on twitter at daniel j lock and you can find my written work for the observer eagle eagle eye any Auburn student media outlet i'm there so yeah i am harrison tar at by harrison tar on twitter you can find my written work at the auburn daily you can find more of my podcasting work at the auburn daily show that's every wednesday with dylan lark every friday with the legendary Lindsay. Crosby got a lot of fun stuff coming up over at the Auburn Daily over at SI having a ton of fun with that having a ton of fun here at the College Loop that's every Tuesday Thursday and Sunday Dylan will plug the rest I know he always will make sure you check us out sub sub if you're listening to the YouTube like and favor the podcast if you're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify uh, Amazon Music Google whatever the hell else we've got going on Dylan get us out of here my man no that's right I am at your boy the tank that is at Y-A-B-O-I the Tank on Twitter. You can also follow the College Loop literally everywhere. That is Spotify, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. 
That is Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts on the way, Amazon Music, if you're also into that. We have the link tree literally everywhere if you want to find us. Subscribe to the YouTube. Find me on the Auburn Daily every Monday and Wednesday. But with that, this is the College Podcast.